perfect relationship is a 50-50 of push and pull, but that's not a perfect relationship when the same person who is pushing you is also pulling your testicles. And that is exactly what happened on the Love is Blind after the altar series that I've just watched. It focuses on like every character, but I'm not focusing on every character because as I was watching this, I had no idea that the contestants Colleen and Matt were as weirdly done as they are. Our relationship started off with communication and then like right. our communication went I kind of thought Matt was initially the jerk. He had weird problems. He started sounding like the Joker every time Colleen did something. Turns out, I think one year into their marriage and she holds not only all the Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but his testicles in a pouch because the way she talks to him is silly, silly boy. Well, that, I don't know if that's love. <laughs> You tell me, because I personally think this might be one of the most unhealthy partnerships slash relationships I've ever seen. I'd like you to weigh in, give me your opinion down below, because maybe I'm wrong, but I'm 100% right. I've just never seen something like this. And the fact that Love is Blind is like, yeah, this is them. It really blows my mind that they can make contestants and be like, this is our show. This is what they look like. Awesome. Yeah, listen, I guess quickly before we start, relationships are probably probably the toughest thing that, that you could do. I, I don't know if there's something easier, but it is also probably the most worthwhile thing that you can do because it offers this amazing reward when you finally find that person. It's like you can't ever look away from them. You'll know when you know. At the same time, you'll know when someone is ripping your testicles off. Matt, please get some help. You need help, bro. Today's video is brought to you by Babbel. Hola te ves hermosa. I bet you're thinking, wow, I didn't think Leo knew Spanish. El rongo. Indeed, you're right. But you too could impress your family, friends, and coworkers by learning a brand new language on Babbel, which is actually one of the top learning apps in the world. I like using Babbel because it's easy to follow along and the lessons are designed by real language teachers so they know what they're doing. And with Babbel, you can start speaking a new language in three weeks. I remember trying to learn other languages in school and it just didn't stick with me because I couldn't relate to the conversation. But Babbel teaches real world practical conversations about travel, business, relationships and more. I'm personally trying to learn Spanish so I could go to... Spain and one day be able to interact with the locals and not seem like a complete tourist, you know, buongiorno, damn, this is why I use the app. Plus, learning a new language is an immensely rewarding experience. Who knows, maybe the true love of your life is across the globe right now, speaking like five languages, with English being her fourth language. <laughs> but you might never meet them if you don't learn the language. So get to learning with Babbel. Click my link to get 60% off your subscription and leave a comment below about what language you'd like to learn. Gracias, Babbel. I've never watched a show where I was like, oh, he's the douchebag. And then like literally two weeks later, I'm like, oh, she's the douchebag. It's a douche wardrobe. I don't, you know what I mean? No! Love is not only blind, it's also deaf at this point because I have never seen a more tone deaf show showcase two people that don't belong together. I'm going to take you through these three episodes that Netflix released and um, hopefully you'll see my points. Uh, by the way, if you haven't subscribed already, we're on our way to 600,000 big babies. So please hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, do follow me on my Instagram at 16leo underscore Score. That way you can message me ideas and also deep dives because people seem to love those and I kind of like them too. So if you have anything, that would be good. I'm also thinking of opening a Google box so people can just put down ideas. How do you feel? Can anybody teach me how to use that? I'm not a boomer. You're just a zoomer. All right, let's go. Love is blind after the altar. I wish you could alter your freaking relationship. <laughs> So it's just a quick recap. Colleen is like, I'm mad I do. I'm do. I don't know why she was talking like that. And then Matt talked like he smoked a little bit of crack. And he's like, yeah, 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 I do. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I'll marry you right now. Fuck yeah. Absolutely, I do. I want to marry you. It's the crack. So they had a very amazing marriage. I had my money on they are not getting married. So I don't know how that happened. At the reunion, it looked like Matt was almost controlling Colleen and she barely spoke. But now we see a different side of them. Brace yourself. Brace! Brace! The biggest highlight for like marriage is he's lovey-dovey. Okay, it's always good when two people who are just into each other can articulate the bounds of their marriage. He's so lovey-dovey, like he keeps loving me, like, uh, like get off me, you know. But you really do look like your dog. Little legs, little sure arms. Legs. Yeah. 
He's got long torso, short legs. I got a long. Um. So the yeah, I don't know if you've noticed just in the initial ten seconds here, but Colleen seems to do most of the talking. Matt seems to be sitting down, just agreeing. She says that Matt baby talks, which is fine. It's nothing wrong with that. And then the next scene, for absolutely no reason, she looks at his dog and is like, dude. You're short, just like your dog. I don't know if that's the most needless thing I've ever heard someone say. That's like me going up to, I don't know, the color white and like being with my white friend and being like, the same. Like why? What is the point? Uh, so then the next thing, just after being absolutely obliterated for being short, Colleen says, I want a house before we get another dog. And then she also tells Matt where she wants it. Matt says we could get a house closer to where he lives. And then she proceeds to do this. The universal sign for, no, Matt, that's not going to actually work. And I own you down there. So unless you want some of this, we're not getting a house there. That's what the sign means. You spend $800,000, 20 miles that way, you get a monster. Out here, it's like a shack. I appreciate that opinion. I appreciate that opinion. I just want to cut both of y'all off. If you spend $800,000, yo, you get a slap in the face. And the banker is like, can you be serious? Seriously, you're going to need three times that to get a one bedroom. I'm not even joking. Oh. American houses, I want to go to Houston and pay $13 and get like a one bedroom house. Honestly. I don't. Yeah, you don't. What are you talking about? I live in a the, fantastic you area. A, a guy's body was in the dumpster. Sorry, girl, let's keep that <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just trying to follow this train of thought of how someone can diss you, say that you look short like your dog, then tell you where you're moving, and then also say the area that you currently live in has dead bodies in it and still be your wife. Like, bitch, can you invite him over if this is what's happening? If he's got Jason from Friday the 13th living next door, can you maybe, maybe open up your home to this kind fellow? Matt. Hope you have a lovely day. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. I feel like Matt's the person that did it at this point. Al allegedly, someone died, right? Allegedly. <laughs> and someone's going to die real soon in this in this area if you don't shut the hell up. <laughs> You know? And we just know that how it's gonna work is to just like wait a second and then we'll move in together. But if we <laughs> didn't say yes, we wouldn't be together right now. There's a lot to unpack there. First of all, a second isn't a year. That's very different terminology. If someone says wait a second and they come back a year later, you'd, you'd attest that to your dad going out for cigarettes at that point. Um, secondly, they're not moved. They're not living together, even though they're married, which is unconventional, I would say. You know, uh, ideally, if you're married, you'd be living together. But in this day and age, I think it's futile to judge other people. I really don't see a problem with that. There is a thing later in this episode where uh, bitch ass Brennan, as I like to call him, judges Matt for not moving in with Colleen. He says he would have done it, but he's not married to Colleen. He's married to some other sack. So I would really not judge that. The thing that is uh, really, really concerning is Colleen. Colleen saying the words, we wouldn't be here to today if we if we didn't say yes at the altar. I know you're a ballerina. Trust me, I know, but you you don't you don't need to display it. Your IQ, you know? Of course if you didn't say yes, you wouldn't be here. You know what I mean? You wouldn't have the ring. You if your parents didn't have sex, you wouldn't be here. You couldn't have just appeared from the ballerina black swan thing. You can't just make yourself up off thin air. Girl, why are you giving me brain aneurysms? Matt is your partner. I'm just a guy. I probably agree with that. Because we... Probably. That's 100% agreeable. If both of y'all said, I'm probably going to be at the altar, will you marry this woman? Yeah, maybe. Probably. I don't know. Can, can y'all commit to something? You're not moving in. So can you just commit to the fact this is is going well even if it's not I think that i would have that same thought process if we said no to each other and then we would get in like those little fights mm -hmm. okay let me stop you there here's a perfect learning opportunity colleen says that they have a lot of fights and if uh they didn't say yes at all so they wouldn't be together which is a wafer thin way of uh making sure that you're together because if she's like oh yeah he did say yes i hate him but but he did say yes i don't know if that's enough to hold weight that's why divorces were created but at the same time i think in this day and age people are just so quick to give up you have like one fight you have 10 fights you have a hundred fights and you're like 
I'm out. I really, really, really think there's two ways of looking at these situations. You can have a million fights with your partner. As long as you're improving and trying to get it right every time, I think you're on the right direction and the right path. And this is why it's so important not to like bring other people's opinions into it. Because if you're serious about this person and every time, even if you make one iota of progress, it means that both of y'all care enough to do so. Now, if you find one person just not ever wanting to help or being like, nope, I'm done. It's a different story. But I don't know Colleen and Matt's thing, but every time they fight, instead of making progress and actually trying to better themselves so they won't do it next time, she's like, oh, Matt, yeah, Matt said yes, so so I guess we'll get through this one too. It seems like more of a bailout strategy rather than, hey, Matt, let's sit down and work out our problems. Why do we keep having these issues? You need to ask yourself these questions. Are they the same issues? And are we resolving them the same way? If these two are always the same, then you need to figure something out. Because ideally, you'd like to be like, well, I'm having different issues because I resolved the other ones and we're working towards getting better and understanding each other. I can guarantee that you're not just going to fully understand someone the day you meet them, even a year after them. My friend said it takes a year to even learn a person. I think it takes longer. So all I'm saying is, I don't know if the way that she's looking at it is necessarily correct. I think they might just be staying with each other out of convenience at this point. We knew we wanted to be with each other, but we had to put in the work to make this really work. Remember, Matt, though. Remember, you were her third option. If this is basketball, you weren't a starter. You weren't even on the bench. You were on the injured list. Like, if someone got injured, then you'd be, you were a reserve. You know what I mean, Matt? So I'm just saying, you gotta just remember that information, brother. And you can kind of piggyback on that if you want. No, yeah, it... Yeah. Yeah. So, wow, she's like... <laughs> All the brains are just... Albert Einstein could never... Bitch, please, get your hair in order. Colleen's come to town. Yeah, and you could, you could piggyback off that if you wanna. That's... that is just... Colleen's your book quote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our relationship started off with communication. And then, like, right. our communication went... <laughs> well, that's... that's how you know you have bad communication. When one person's like, it's not that it wasn't good. And she's like, no, no, it was bad. It was really bad. Can't even agree on whether you have good or bad communication. And then you would get mad because I'm mad. <laughs> and then it was just like... <laughs> yes. Again, another learning curve, because this basically is... I, I feel like if you go to a psychology class, you just show them this and you're like, well, break this down. Whenever people are doing this, it's important to be like, well, this is how I feel. But also, also, how do you feel, Matt? I feel like you were talking over me and you were making me angry. How do you feel? Oh, you feel like this? Where's the common ground? How can we walk past it? It's very, very seldom that that happens and it's more so, this is how I feel. I want to be a victim. Uh, Matt, you made me feel like shit. Just, just accept that you're the worst one out of us rather than yo, we're a team. Let me figure out where you're at, where I'm at. I'd like to make you happy at the end of the day. So how do we get to that position? It's a simple, simple and small change, but Matt's just like, yeah, yeah, I, I, was, I was a piece of shit. <laughs> and then she has the audacity to say this. Your little legs. Oh, my little legs. <laughs> Cheers to growth. Cheers to growth. Yeah, you can, you can shut up, Colleen. She literally said a year ago you'd get mad if I called you short stack. Now you're laughing at it. That's not growth. That's you absolutely pummeling this man down to within an inch of what he used to be. Oh, my little legs. Yeah. You dirty, dirty scoundrel. Ouch, Matt. He's having his individuality ripped from his asshole. Nobody's putting that back. Anyway, after initially seeing Matt and Colleen, I was like, well, they have issues. So the next scene, of course, is the girls meeting up to have their girl talk. And I'd like to see how Colleen talks about Matt during this time. What's it like having a husband? I got really close. Ah, that's Zeneb. She'll be on another episode. I will talk about her. Man, Love is Blind season three really was trash. <laughs> She asked Colleen how marriage is and how uh, being married for a year is because she almost got married. And Colleen, Colleen dishes the truth. Colleen, you have not been sharing. How are you and Matt? Okay, so me and Matt are really good right now. <laughs> Lies. Tell the truth. We honestly adore and respect and love each other. Not enough. Not enough. Uh-uh. You can't just love someone. You have to respect them. And Colleen correctly identified they were both stubborn. Fantastic. Now you know what the issue is. How are both of you fixing it? If Matt is being less stubborn, it doesn't fix the issue. You have to do the same work. Matt needs to say something about you. Your job shit. Your ballerina. <laughs> and you have to laugh about that. Something has to happen. Matt has to say that you have to be like, okay, I don't ever, I never used to like that, but I see that you're 
changing while being stubborn and I need to do the same for you. That's the thing. Matt's changed. Matt is, seems more subdued than ever somehow. I feel like you gave him 200 Xanax before this episode. I just need to know where the change is coming from both sides because just one person changing is not enough. You gotta respect the person enough. If you, if you really say you love them, then you should respect them enough to change, to at least compromise, please. Noxious, like. I'm sorry. <laughs> Up each other's asshole. That sounds, sounds, sounds like something I would say. What? She just said, she didn't even laugh. We're up each other's assholes. What are you talking about? How do you just say that word and be like normal about it? All right. I don't know what kind of ballerina school you go to. I'm not living with him until he neuters his dog. Did you guys know this? He hasn't neutered his dog. So it's just. Did you guys know this about Matt? Did do you know about Matt's dog? Uh, no, Colleen, that's your husband's dog. I don't, we don't keep up with his dog. You, I mean, like, it's common knowledge, right? Matt's dog is a neuter. It's like public information, right? Guys, am I, am I crazy here? A yeah, I'm sounding a little bit crazy. No, I'm not, because Matt didn't neuter his dog, so I'm not moving in with some balls. I said two balls is the only thing I'm moving in with. Matt's got to fix his dog or maybe neuter himself. I said I don't care which one goes, but I need two gone. Do you guys know this about Matt? <laughs> How is anyone supposed to know about Matt's dog? Fuck the dog. Yeah. Like, literally. But like... What? Fuck the dog. Yeah. Like, literally. What the fuck? Nope, that's not what that means. <laughs> that's bestiality, you dumb, dumb, dumb woman. What the hell is wrong with you? Every time words come out of her mouth, I just want to put them back in. Just the, the less you talk to Bella. I, her is the worst. I didn't know about the wiener dog. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. A dog? Like, I'm sorry, but... Nancy, you didn't know dogs have dicks? How do you think other dogs get made? Do you think they just bark at each other hard enough? What is wrong with you, Nancy? How, how can you sit there in your 30s and be like, I didn't know that was a thing. Dogs have penis sides? Yeah, I don't know. No. Bartice never told me about the dogs. He told me about the birds and the bees, though. Is it the same? Oh, Nancy. So the obnoxious ladies sit and scream and drink and stuff, and Alexa says, I'm having a party. Because she's, she's throwing a party because it's her birthday, and she wants everyone to be invited, and that is just fantastic. So in another video, I'm going to talk about Zenob and Cole because they haven't seen each other for a year, and they'll both be at the party. But this, again, episode, I just want to focus on Colleen and Matt, and they'll be at the party too. So we'll see how they interact and how people are in party situations because when you're a couple there's home couple and party couple it's very different and uh it's it's kind of interesting to see how people react in different situations oh my god. Oh my god. for what my birthday I love you know you. it's okay. very exciting i'm leaving my that's how you know these are some of the best friends of all time oh you're throwing a party for what it's my birthday today Tomorrow? Okay. So they finally have Alexa's party and it's a cocktail party. She wants it to be really fancy to celebrate her living, which is just, you know, fantastic. She's like, I want it to be Met Gala fancy. And you know, she's really achieved so much in her life. Like, she's still here. So that's, that's an achievement. So everyone's happy and she invited everyone from Love is Blind. Sometimes you forget that uh, Alexa's dad is a rich person. I don't exactly know what he does. You just forget how removed from reality these people are when you see that this is a birthday party. It's for nothing other than mm, just existing. Did you take a shot? No, I can I tell in your eyes. I so during the party, everyone's uh, socializing. Colleen's with her goals, which she has a right to be. And Matt being the controlling person that he is. I, I just, I don't know. This part always bugs me. He like comes up from behind her. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> this is my girl. <laughs> And uh, she's like, I'm just chilling. I don't know how you feel at parties. I I think it's good to, you know, be with your partner and then you can let them go. They can socialize, come back, you meet them. If you love them, it'll be fine. There's no problem. But Matt just might also be drinking and want to get in everyone's personal airspace. I'm not sure which it is. But Colleen seems to be like a bit standoffish. So Colleen tells the cute story about how Matt passed out on or after their wedding, presumably from the stress of saying yes to her. Yeah, I, I guess... He he, he maybe drank one too much. But at this party, she's got him on a limit. Translation, she's got him on a leash. Fuck the dog. Yeah. Like, literally. I don't know. Again, this is a partner to partner thing. I, I personally wouldn't say, honey, you're only allowed two drinks, you drunk 
fuck. I probably wouldn't say that, but Colleen seems to be doing that. And Bartise actually has to save his mans and be like, yeah, I don't care what the limit is. <laughs> He's my boy and I haven't seen him in a while, so we're gonna we're gonna drink. One. I don't care what's allowed. <laughs> Really don't. Yeah, you're not in charge. I know, <laughs> I know how he gets. I'm in charge. That's, it literally took Bartise coming up and being like, I don't care. I'm in charge. And she's like, no, 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 no. And Bartise had to literally be like, listen, I have to sun everyone here, including my boy Matt. So I'm going to drink with him. It's, it's not a good look when your boys have to rescue you. <sighs> I'm not saying that Colleen doesn't know best. In fact, sometimes your partner does know best. But in these occasions, once off, so like very seldom, like when you're having parties and stuff, is it not okay to just let people love? Is it just okay to have no restraints on people and just to accept them for who they are? Yeah, maybe Matt will drink a lot. Maybe he'll get drunk. Maybe he'll start twerking on Alexa. Maybe he'll take his shirt off and start riding the pneumatic bull, which turns out just to be Brennan being like, get off me. Who knows? It'll make for a fun night. He's not doing that every night. He's not going back there the next day. You can afford to have a little fun. Please, Colleen. This one's the <laughs> better cut. I don't have to oh God, this just gets worse and worse. So she's not, she fed him once because he was passed out. You just don't see, okay. A little, little oil spill there. He goes. And now she's not cooking for him again because Matt's the better cook. So Matt can't drink. He's the one who cooks. He has to move to her. He has to accept the fact that she makes short jokes about him. Oh, also his dog's balls have to... <laughs> Seems like a good marriage, Matt. <laughs> Thank God you got in it. No, no necessary plans to have for what? kids. Oh, no. I know eventually... Absolutely not. We're about the family. children. God. You know like the kangaroos, how they can put the nuts back in their pile? Like... <laughs> Look it up. Don't, not like that, but you know, it's the actual thing. Um, they can retract their testicles. You may, you may not like it, but you can all go to eat kangaroo testicles for all I care. This is how I feel watching this. I, SK asks Matt about kids and he's like, ah, uh, not right now. And Colleen butts in and is like, absolutely not. To the point, SK even has to be like, listen, I asked him. I, w I would like to maybe hear his perspective, not yours. You don't have to constantly talk for him. That's two people now. If you get, if you get Cole to be like, I asked Matt a question, it's going to be over. You lose. The game is over. Colleen, please stop talking for this dude. It just, when people have to actually ask and specify who they were talking to, I feel like you can look at yourself in the mirror and be like, oh, maybe I need to not do that as much. If enough people are telling you something, it's probably true. I mean, if it happens, we're very prepared for it. <laughs> I want. That's the least. Oh my God. Oh. If they have kids, I'm gonna be so sad now. Matt's like, yeah, we'll be fine. And she literally looked at him like, oh, like he kicked her in the vagina. Wow. Y'all need to, y'all not even on the same page. Y'all not even reading the same book. Not even in the same library, man. <sighs> help guys i mean whatever like you signed up for it you signed your name on it that's not how things are you know you never look at someone and say this is this is this is who i am this is what you signed up for if you know you have things to work on if you know that you can be better then work on it like it's, marriage is gonna take forever till death do us part and in that time if you stay stagnant for like 80 years it's not like you can just coast you're probably working harder because you're now supporting yourself and another person it's it's a it's it's the most rewarding thing but it's also like probably the toughest thing and it's just hearing stuff like you know what you signed up for and then everyone reacting like Ugh. it's kind of like it's kind of like saying yeah i'm a bitch take it or leave it which is just not how marriage should work it's not how anything should work nobody should be saying that is all i'm saying silly silly boy jesus Nah, uh, she then condescends him by being like, silly, silly boy. Uh, imagine, again, role reverse. She picks up a drink and he puts it down. He's like, naughty, silly, stupid girl. Very condescending. Ugh. I know, I know. Oh, she did it with love. I don't know, man. The cameras are on her. When the cameras are off, I don't know. Because if this is how she can act when the cameras are on, SOS for Matt. Bring me a gift. Uh, yeah. Nice. It's in my pants. Gift of love. Take it in the box. box. We interrupt this Matt and Colleen session to say, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving this earth. That was Alexa's dad. That, that was her dad. If I could just recount, recount what, just, what happened. just happened. He comes in. He says, did you bring me a gift to Brennan who he doesn't like? Brennan says nothing. And then he said, oh, it's, it's in my pants. And then her daughter, oh, sorry, his daughter says, dick in a box. Don't talk about your dad's dick. But, but, you know, just to make things worse. At the end, he says, it wouldn't fit in a box. Disgusting! Insinuating that he has a big, big, juicy dick. 
Also, Alexa's wearing see-through everything. So, you know, this is a beautiful family right there. That is, you might make another family with your own family at this rate. Colleen and Matt seem to have been okay, but the next day they meet up with their families and start having conversations about moving in and life together. Does he live the lid up? Leave the lid up. You know what? The There's splatter. Okay, that's not acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about this several times. There's splatter. Come on. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. We're eating. We're eating. We're eating. Let's not talk about shit splatter right now. But I think it's really interesting and also kind of just like it blows my mind that the parents that they're meeting up with are Matt's parents and Colleen feels so comfortable that she can openly shit talk about Matt's shit stains and shit splatter to Matt's parents. It just seems like she's so comfortable with dissing this man and constantly saying what he's doing wrong. I haven't heard her say anything this whole episode that he's done right. Have you? Seriously, I'm not, I'm not even on Matt's side. I don't even know if he's a good guy, but I know nobody deserves this. I don't know if you can just stand and exist and have someone be annoyed at you if that's okay. I really just don't think that that's a thing. I clean it up. That is important. <laughs> I'll come in, I'll be like, nah. <laughs> We're not going to be with you on that one. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay, mom. I'm sorry. I clean my shit stains up. Don't worry. I splatter it like a Jackson Pollock painting every time I hit the toilet. It's fine. But I have a, I have the brush, mom. Okay. Now, can can I eat my barbecue ribs? They kind of look like the splatter. Oops. I can't imagine a life without him. Yeah, as much as, like, you annoy me. <laughs> I did it on purpose. <laughs> yeah, no, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> if, if a girl sat next to me and my mom was on the opposite end and she said, I can't imagine a life without him even though he annoys me she would ask why are you with him then if he makes you feel like that and then she would probably kick her out <laughs> I don't think, I don't know if this is maybe a cultural thing. I just don't think in any day, age, shape or way, you can ever sit next to brown people or maybe Eastern people's moms and shit talk their son without getting your ass kicked. Even if he is annoying, don't say it. I'm not gonna ever go up to like my girlfriend's parents and be like, <laughs> not only is she stupid, she's an idiot. She's also really annoying, but I do love her. I would run. I, this is not even a thing that you should be saying. I'm, I'm sorry, but it's just like, they made those two people made that kid and you're like i love him but he's so annoying you're you're insulting everyone at the table it's just crazy to me don't do it because he annoys me too yeah. so it just happened that's my love language i like to annoy you oh, okay well <laughs> shit i guess the mom's like yeah he annoys everyone <laughs> matt's a dick you married him i just made him <laughs> the fact that he was going to all your shows yeah and, and i'm like going yeah he's matt's at the even ballet the one, even the one she told me not to go to i still show still up came, yep. <laughs> marriage takes work I'm sorry. Uh, you can play all the happy country music that you like. You can get me to feel like I'm supposed to be in some sort of romantic movie. But I don't think that this is that. His dad actually said Matt went to multiple ballets. And then Matt said even the ones that she didn't want me to come to. You're telling me this man took time off his work or whatever he did to come see you do the thing that you love doing. And you still had the audacity to be like, don't come see this. What ungrateful shit is this man? Well, I just don't understand. Like, how? What do you? What do you like about this man? Honestly, is he just convenient at this point? Why would you tell him not to come to a ballet? Why would you tell him not to come to something you love? If I'm doing a concert, a performance, stand-up comedy, I want my person right there. I don't want her not to come. I'd be really sad if she didn't. Ah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. You gotta learn to how to fight. Mm. You can't fight and run. Mm. Which was my issue. And it was mm, mm. that. You can't fight and run. Running away from your problems is not a thing. <sighs> not communicating, not talking about it. If you're, if you're with someone, you owe them that discrepancy. You owe them that. They're there for you. They're with you for a reason. You running away, you not talking, you closing yourself off. It's almost like you want it not to work. But you know that other person's there for you. That's, that's advice from two people who seem to be married happily. Don't, don't be running away. These are things. If the person matters, you can get through it. But you can't, you can't avoid that. You gotta talk, you gotta be there. You gotta say it, even if it's tough. Even if the words are hard. You gotta figure it out. Even just like a small little argument that would like blow up into something bigger. It was just easy to leave. It was easy just to... Go to the yeah. stairwell. 
It is. It's easier to shut down. It's easier not to deal with things. It's harder to talk about it and be like, well, this is this is how things are. Just notice how loud the crickets are. It's easier to do those things, but but that's not always the right thing. And if you want longevity in something, you got to learn how to talk to your partner, even when you don't know how to. Like that's that's kind of the key to it, because the longer you just r escape and run like <laughs> it's just detrimental to things. So after getting some advice from Matt's parents, it's the next day and Colleen and Matt are in their apartment and this is the most blasphemous <laughs> this is the horror this is the worst thing I've seen in a long time just look at it can you please wake up <laughs> like please bring up the energy well you mean start dancing or something no I'm just saying like you're always tired yeah I work a lot <laughs> This motherfucker was on his phone and she's like, can you please be more energetic? Did you want him to start swiping like, like that or something? What did you want from him? He was just sitting there. He was just standing there. And she's like, you're always tired. That's a complaint? That should be, oh, okay, let's figure out a way so that you can get less tired. Let me help you. What are you complaining about this dude being tired for? That's, he just woke up and it's already like a problem for her. <laughs> like with my, are you listening to me? I'm listening. He got a text. Did he tell the person you need to text me right now? The phone's not even in his hand. I'm sorry. I'm not mad. I didn't marry her. You did. Sorry. Yes, I'm listening. Oh. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> she even turned his phone over. All right. All right. He really does something trying to control every aspect of my life here huh i swear to god he's gonna wake up one day and everything's gonna be gone she's like well you weren't listening you weren't being attentive so i just took and sold all your stuff <sighs> now you're making it awkward mm -hmm. what are the pet peeves i know we've got them oh he does this little oh she hates when i pick my nails thing so then they start talking about pet peeves because this turns into something bigger than it is for absolutely no reason she's just annoyed that he's not being as energetic like that is the least rational reasonable thing that you can probably do i just colleen my god so yeah like i said they start talking about their pet peeves but see if you can if you can see matt naming any for colleen or is it all just what matt's done J you tell me picking my nail like and you this. poke and prod me i hate and that I too kind of poke yeah, her in the ear and stuff like that, that. <laughs> and she hates so yeah, she doesn't like that he picks his nails. She, I guess he touches her. That's that's a no-no. What else? What what are the pet peeves? So really, uh, you just you're the annoying one. Yeah, I am pretty annoying. Yeah. I will say that, but it's fun. You love it. Yeah. <laughs> Yup, so those are the pet peeves. Matt, if you can get rid of that, you should be happy, Colleen. You should be really happy. That's, this is just tragic to even like watch or go through. I just, it's tragic. They finally get a chance to sit down and then they talk about like their house again because that was the situation at the start and they seem to have uh, slightly different outlooks on the houses as well. So I think if you were friends with this couple, you just feel absolutely... You know, I don't think that you could be around this couple. They'd be too taxing to be around. Now, some couples are just easy. You're like, hey, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, even, don't even have, have friends. friends. But, but um, uh, I just assume there's some nice ones. And there's probably others like uh, Jan and Michael from the office. Do you wash your hands, babe? Yes, I did for you, princess, even though I only went number one. <laughs> These are those. I think an older home is better. Okay, how is buying an older home a good investment? So now they start talking about like sort of finances and uh, and, and comma stuff, which is a huge topic, you know, um, among marriages and things like that. And be like finance and, and what you're doing with things when you're pulling your money together is really important. You should very much agree on these like core values. Uh, Matt says he wants a newer house because it'll, it'll appreciate in value and probably break down less. Colleen says she wants an older house. I don't really know why yet. Uh, unless you're getting a Victorian home or something that you're not probably gonna live in, you don't want to buy an older house because it will break down more from experience. Also, newer houses do go up in value if maintained. If it's a financial decision, then yeah. But if you want to live in it and just be cozy and you really want the old house, then yeah. You just have to figure out which one of those you want. Just because it has like the bones or like you can trust them. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? A newer house, like who knows what what could happen? Yeah, that that look of math, that like, are you smarter than a fifth grader? I don't. Know. The bones of the house. Uh, you trust the bones of the house. The bones of the. 
I might have to ask if she knows that houses aren't made out of bones. You ever heard a real estate agent come up to you and be like, this is an old house, but the bones of the house are really trust. These are some trustworthy bones. Look at that. Look at the bone sticking out right there. That's a bony house right there. I'll tell you what, if that's a skeleton house, that's a... Mm. It's an exoskeleton house. That was beautiful. Bony house, huh? That's that's her reasoning. No, it's not gonna break down. The bones are there, and you trust bones, so. Sure? Yeah. Oh my god. Well, maybe that was a little too hard. Matt, just get out. Just get the just get the divorce. It's fine. It's fine. You, you, nobody's gonna even blame you at this point. Matt, just do it. Colleen then pulls out the my happiness is your happiness and Matt finally puts his foot down just a little bit and being like, yeah, no, I agree, but we need to reach some like common ground here because we're not really... Ever since you said that bones thing, I've been thinking of leaving you, so. <laughs> Make it up to me. <laughs> like White Rock Lake. White Rock. So, white Rock. So I said White Rock. You said White Cock. Jesus Christ, no I didn't. Yeah, no, he didn't. That's the weird part. He actually didn't. Now you're just putting words in his mouth. Wow, I'm telling you, if this is the good part of their relationship and this is the part we're supposed to root for and be like, wow, they're quirky, I have zero hope for them. Matt comes on and talks about how Colleen always wants the best for him and they laugh a lot. I really wish Matt, Matthew, Matholomew, I really wish that I could sit here and say that I believe you, but I've seen her laugh, but it was only at you. And then every time anyone said she wants the best for me it's you I haven't seen her do anything to actually want the best for you so I kind of wish that I could just see where you're coming from I'll take I'll take your word for it because you're the one who has to you know deal with the punches but like brah brah you know what I mean <laughs> I'm making old-fashioned sound effects this is like an old kung fu movie sound effect. <laughs> that's kind of how I feel about this relationship bro ah uh, my wife so what do you think about that yeah I'll go. I don't even know how to comprehend what the hell that was. I guess they have, you know, made the effort to continue trying to improve. And listen, if they're both at it, then that's fine. At the end of the day, I'm only seeing what Netflix is showing me. I could be completely wrong. They could have a great relationship beyond this point. I wouldn't know. But, you know, if the best thing you have in a relationship is my wife, then... Dude, come on. Then she ends with another joke about how small he is and then smacks him across the face. She's like, you're small. Whoa, this is a heck of a relationship we got going on here. Whew. Would you love me if I was a worm? No, you're a worm. Like, what do you, like, what do you want me to say to that? Uh, and the very last thing that happens is she picks up on that TikTok trend where people used to be like, would you love me if I was a worm? And then she, yeah, Matt is like reasonably, no, I'm not going to put my dick in a worm. That's some weird form of like unhumane, inhumane bullshit. And she's like, well, you know, then you don't really love me, Matt. And then Matt agrees to loving her, which is probably just a final glimpse into how their relationship goes. She says something, Matt has his own opinion, and she convinces him to have her opinion. And he has to have it because he wants this relationship to work. And that was how to not be in a healthy relationship, starring Matt and Colleen. I don't know what to say. I personally think that it's it seems very unhealthy to me. I can see the cracks and crevices, but again, maybe I'm looking at it in the wrong lens. Maybe I just need a new pair of glasses. You know, maybe I just need to borrow masks. I, I had a look at their Instagram and they, you know, as of November, they, yeah, no, they haven't posted anything since November. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm reading the comments. You def do not look happy with him. Sorry, I just don't see it. Y'all's relationship is so awkward. Sure, banter is fun, but you look so uncomfortable around him every scene. Fine line between banter and fighting? Love y'all, just don't think you're soulmates, but what do we know? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I guess everybody seems to think that this is quite the uh, shit show. If somehow you're watching this, Matt, link three times if you need Bartiz to break you out. I think he's actually on a new show called The Perfect Match, so I'll be covering that with a deep dive. Honestly, Matt, at this point, you should go on that show and maybe Colleen should go on it. And if you find each other, great. This might be one of those relationships where you're so bad that you find someone else who's in the same position. and You're like, oh, so bad, you're all good. But even then, it's a little bit exciting. This just seems like it's going to end in tragedy, much like the Titanic 1912. 
<laughs> this has nothing to do with anything. I just love the movie. All right. Well, um, listen, if you're ever in a relationship like this, look at yourself in the mirror and think about it. And you're really going to let someone put you through this. If a person doesn't really want to work with you and for you, if someone isn't really thanking God or whoever the hell they need to thank you every day, like, damn, you sexy. I'm glad I'm with you. Then, you know, I don't know if they need to do that. All I'm saying is life is short. You know, isn't it awesome to be happy with the person you're with? Can't we just do that? So that's all I'm saying. Hopefully you guys work it out. Hopefully I'm wrong. But if I'm not, then this is a uh, psychologist Leo saying, I told you so. You now owe me $2,000 for the session. Thank you. Bye bye. She ain't even got a ass. She did a dash and bit a lash. You know a dash and she know.